2019 was definitely the year of AMD for CPUs where they came in with their competitive pricing as well as their IPC increases and just those extra cores and threads which Intel didn't have an answer to until now and we fast forward to May 2020 and we've got 24 new CPUs coming out on the desktop from Intel which today we're going to discuss these and also the new features coming in with the Z490 chipsets which is a new socket LGA 1200. So let's roll that intro and then get into the details as well as my favorite picks on these lineup of CPUs for you guys. So starting off from the bottom, we have the i3 lineup here. Now you will notice that there is no K and there is no F variant, which means you're not gonna see an overclockable four core eight threaded CPU this time around. However, the one thing I did just allude to there was eight threads. And this time around, Intel on their i3 lineup is introducing hyper threading, which does open the door to much more competition and much better value for money, especially if you want to couple one of these CPUs with say an RTX 2060 Super or maybe a 5600 XT. You're really going to notice no difference between going one of these budget CPUs and a higher end CPU. So in other words, you can save a lot of money by going with either the i3 or AMD's upcoming solution, the Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X, which I believe is uh, AMD sort of beating Intel to the chase here on the budget end with them releasing their own four core eight threaded solution to sort of appease this budget market. Now, one thing we're gonna see here with this i3-10100, it's my favorite pick out of these five CPUs they're offering. We've got here $122 suggested retail price on the Intel website. Now they do say something about a thousand uh, units on this pricing. However, that being said, I have noticed in the past that this pricing on this website does come pretty close to what you can expect, at least on American and Australian retail shelves, especially in Australia when we adjust it to the triple P pricing terms. This time around with a 10100, the maximum turbo frequency is 4.3 gigahertz. We can definitely expect an all core turbo above four gigahertz on all cores or threads, which means that this i3 at its price point is definitely looking like it's similar to an i7-7700, but that CPU years ago was released for a much higher price tag than this ever was. So the fact that this is their entry level CPU and it's coming around a previous flagship Intel pricing and performance is definitely something that not only budget builders are gonna like, but also people who are enthusiasts of competition are going to love. Now, one thing you'll notice here with the i3 and the i5 and lineup is that they've got Turbo Boost 2.0. And they also don't support the Thermal Velocity Boost, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Now as for the i3 and i5, they've only got official support for 2666 DDR4 memory, but I'm assuming this is for dual-sided sticks in dual channel, which will stress the IMC the most. If you're putting in two sticks, as say 3200 megahertz memory in dual channel, should work easily on all the SKUs here. But it is important to know that the i7 and i9 chips look like they are getting a binned IMC where that's 2933 megahertz. And there are some other things to look out for, which we'll talk about later, but let's move over to the i5 lineup where they've got in total nine different SKUs coming out here with also them introducing an F and a K SKU amongst the 10600 lineup. But the 10400F is easily standing out to me along this lineup as being one of the kings in not just the whole lineup of Intel's 10th gen CPUs, but also in the CPU that's probably gonna bring the most competition, I feel, to a Zen 2. With coming in just over $150, you're getting six cores, 12 threads. And again, it looks like it will clock to all cores over four gigahertz, meaning that this is gonna go head to head with the Ryzen 5 3600, which was my favorite CPU out of the third gen stack, just bringing really good value for money. Well, actually the Ryzen 5 3500X was my favorite for gamers, but AMD did uh, stop selling that or allowing it to be sold on the likes of AliExpress. But essentially at this price point, you're getting an i7-8700 by the looks of it, which was a CPU that was only released a few years ago for a much higher price tag. So hooray for competition. And let's move over now to the i7 lineup where they're introducing five different SKUs here. My favorite being the uh, 10700F. This is previously equivalent to the i9 series, which of course was their most up-to-date CPU lineup. So the fact that you're getting eight cores, 16 threads, similar to the i9-9900 for under 300 bucks, they've got the CPU listed for $298, 
is definitely looking like it's a decent solution if you need extra cores and threads. But when we compare that to the 10400F, for example, we are seeing a price increase here of nearly double, but we're only getting 33% more cores and threads. So you do start to see, even according to Intel's own spec sheet and lineup here, that the value does start to drop off heavily after the i5 lineup. Though the one thing that does confuse me a little bit about the 10700F is that it does have a 65 watt TDP there. So how the maximum core boost on all cores is going to work still remains to be seen. I will be checking that out for you guys, but also the i3 and the i5 having less cores and less threads do sport that same 65 watt TDP. But now onto the granddaddy of performance. This is their i9 lineup, which is now sporting 10 cores and 20 threads. Still not enough to go anywhere near the 3950X, for example, but definitely a great addition for someone that I would label as the power gamer. They love gaming with the highest frame rates possible, but they still want to do things like multitask and then edit videos on the side or do whatever they do that needs those extra cores and threads. And this one coming in with a maximum boost here of 5.3 gigahertz on the 10900KF and K, and then the 10900 sporting a maximum boost of 5.2 gigahertz guaranteed is something that we have to talk about because Intel on this lineup are introducing what they call Turbo Boost 3.0, which essentially gets the best two cores of these 10 cores and then boosts them up to essentially 5.2 and 5.3 gigahertz. Now make no mistake about it, this is gonna be the cream of the crop in terms of binning, not just on the integrated memory controller side of things, but also on the clock speed and how high they go. Now one thing about the 10900F is just like the i7, I'm a little bit confused with this 65 watt TDP. I believe in practice, if you wanna get the most performance out of this thing, you're definitely gonna to have to go well above 65 watt TDP, where the 10900KF, for example, has a TDP of 125 watts. And that seems about right on a Z490 motherboard. Though what we're looking at here is a new technology called Thermal Velocity Boost, which is looking like it's very similar to Precision Boost 2 and Precision Boost Overdrive 2 that released on Zen 2, where essentially if you've got a really good cooling solution, good motherboard, it will then auto overclock the CPU a little bit more because it sees that the temperatures are lower and they're able to go a little bit higher. Now, another thing about the CPU is they're using their stim again. So essentially it's gonna be soft soldered on, but this time around they are thinning out the die a bit more, which Intel also claims is gonna keep the temperatures down more so than it did on their ninth gen and previous CPUs. So now it's time to talk about competition, budget, and which CPU should you be looking out for. And my two favorite picks going into this are gonna be the i3 10100 and also the 10400F on the i5 lineup. I think they're gonna offer phenomenal price performance as well as being able to be coupled with a budget H410 motherboard, which in this time around, they're going with an LGA 1200 socket and there's gonna be four new lineup of motherboards, that being H410, B460, H470, and also Z490, which we do have a few Z490 boards here at the studio already, but I don't have any CPUs to test them with. So there will be a heap of uh, reviews coming out on new hardware this month, both from AMD and from Intel. So stay tuned for that. And with the motherboards and the feature set this time around, you can expect up to 40 PCIe 3.0 lanes and there is no native Thunderbolt 3 as well as no native PCA 4 on board the motherboards this time around. However, one thing to note is that the motherboards can add that in via external chips. Take for instance, uh, ASRock's Velocity here, Z490, that's gonna have 16 lanes of PCA 4.0 available, whereas the other three motherboards I have here don't have PCA 4.0. So it's gonna be interesting to see what some of the motherboard manufacturers are doing with their boards. Though in terms of looks and features and also price point, do let us know in the comment section below what you'd like to see come out of the motherboard manufacturers this time around. So make no mistake, the LGA 1200, you will need a new socket and you will need a new motherboard to use these 10th gen CPUs and they won't work on any previous motherboards because it's a different socket. Though some other things to talk about with this CPU is that they're using the UHD 630 graphics, which is really underpowered. They've been using this actually for a couple of years now. So if you're looking for a better onboard graphics solution with these CPUs, it's really not going to uh, hit the mark. Hence why I'm uh, actually more curious on the F CPUs this time around, which don't feature that onboard portion. And of course, you're not paying for that. In terms of the K tax, that's looking like it's around 50 to $60, depending on the CPU you go for. And in terms of the F license, depending on which lineup you're in, you can expect to pay around 10 to $20 less on a F CPU 
versus a normal CPU. And with all those 10th gen details out of the way, it's finally just time to talk about competition in general and how in 2020, it's definitely heating up to be a very good market and time to buy a CPU, especially if you're a gamer, where this time around, I'm gonna say, for instance, if you're buying an i3 or an i5, or you're buying a Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, it's not going to make that much of a difference you're literally going to be coming down to a few dollars and then the differences in games this is my prediction is that it's going to be very minimal. So if you go with an i3 10100 or you go with a Ryzen 3 3100, you haven't made a bad choice on either play in that you're going to be getting very good performance for the dollar. Same with the Ryzen 5 and i5. When we move up to say 16 cores versus 10 cores, that's going to become a different argument for what you want to get as an individual. So for what it's worth, it's finally looking like Intel is responding on the mainstream desktop market and that just means as consumers of course we win in the end and with all that out of the way do let us know in the comment section below what's going to be your favorite cpu coming out of 10th gen and how do you think it's going to stack up against zen 2 and also amd's upcoming zen 3 because from what i know already is that we're not going to see an ipc improvement on these 10th gen desktop uh, components from intel however from amd's side of things we will see a yet again another IPC increase. But do drop a comment down below. And speaking of comments, we've got the question there here, which comes from Renan Donasalvo. And they asked, does any X99 card works with DDR3? The E5 uh, 2620V3 works with DDR3 memories. And he's referring to the budget six core 12 thread, which took a look at in a video up here. And this particular CPU won't support DDR3. When it comes to the V3 X99 Xeons, you've got to look out for the ones that do specifically support DDR3. And they're usually the ones that aren't listed on Intel's website. So this is CPUs like the 2678V3, for example, that are essentially the same as the 2680V3, but they had that DDR3 registered memory support on board because they were made for a uh, partner like HP, which specifically requested it. And it was never released on retail shelves until now, now that they're getting sold off on the used market and they're becoming available. And speaking of the market, I'll make an update video in terms of what's going on with PC parts at the moment. I've been hearing all kinds of different stories and I hope that aside, you've been staying safe wherever you are in the world. And if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you've stayed this far and you wanna keep seeing the content coming the moment it drops, then be sure to stay subbed, ring that bell, and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. Okay.